Welcome to another video from the YouTube channel beginningprogrammer.com beginning C++ a quick primer how to extract digits from a number so let's get started you may encounter a time when you need to extract the digits out of a number and for that I will show you how to do it so let's say for example you have a number uh, 999 and you want to extract or 987 and you want to extract the individual digits so let's get started and to keep it modular, you want to do it in a function. So let's go ahead and do this. We want to have a array of integers. So let's extract the digits. And we pass it an integer number. And let's not use number. It's not a reserved word, I don't think, but let's just call it num. And we're going to extract the digits. So let's go ahead and extract the digits of a number. 987 is, and we put it in a loop so we can get the digits and we can call extract digits. For now, let's just return zero. Let's return zero and let's go ahead and create an array here, integer, nums, and we just, we, we have, let's say, three for now. And we can do this. We can say equals zero. <clears throat> so let's extract the numbers. So let's call extract, and we need to declare an array. So let's declare an array of nums. And let's say equals. it extract digits and let's pass it the number 987 and we have to extract that and we display 987 and we can say for int i equals zero so we can display the the digits i less than let's say three but that wouldn't work because we need to know the the digits along the way so we don't know the length so let's just create a variable named length and let's say i plus plus and display the digits nums i and we can do that to a c out c out nums so let's go ahead and do that and let's separate them with a space and let's do that and let's go ahead and do an endo here so we can have a new line. So if we extract the digits, we need to know the length. But let's say we don't know the length. So we need to do something like this. And let's, if we did it, we can do it. We can hard code it and just say, okay, maximum of 10 digits, right? So we can say 10 digits. And so we wanna extract the number, we can put it in the while loop, we can say while. And we can say while, and let's put it in a do while. Do while a num is greater than zero. Let's do that. And so we want to extract the digits. So how do we do it? Remember from our modulus, we can we can get the module and we can divide it by ten, get the remainder that gives us the last digit. So let's just say nums i we have to determine what i is but let's just do that for now and we can say num mod 10 and that'll give us the rightmost digit and we want to start from the end so we can say nums i and we can say i minus minus and let's say that since we're going from 10 we want our i to start off at 9. So this will give us the, the remainder, but then what happens to the next number? Well, let's take and divide it by 10. So we can say num equals num divided by 10. And what that does, it takes a number, for example, in the first case, it'll take 987 divided by 10, which will give us 98. 
And so once we have 98, now the, the next number is 8. So now the next number is 98, and we have now 98. So it, then it'll go again, and when it divides that by, mods it by 10, it'll give us the number 8, and then I, and it will give us then when we divide 98 by 10, it'll give us 9, and then finally, eventually, it gets to 0, because when we divide 9 by 10, that'll be 0, and so we won't have anything else, and it breaks out of the loop. Let's see if this works. So we have to return nums. And <clears throat> notice that I initialize nums to 0, so what's going to happen here is going to have leading zeros. So we're starting from the end, from 9, and none i, which is the rightmost number in the array, it is going to give us that last digit. And then it'll just work its way backwards until it reaches uh, zero. So once it reaches zero, we can continue here and just initialize everything, for example, to negative one. So we could have done this and we could just do it as easily here. We can say negative one 10 times. And we could say negative one negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, and so on until we have 10, right? So we could actually do it like this. It'll help us for with readability. And the reason that I'm doing this is because if we have a negative number, we know we haven't initialized it. So we have six and we have seven. We have negative eight and negative nine and negative 10. And so that gives us 10 numbers that are negative, initialized to a negative number. And so when we overwrite that, it's going to have real numbers, positive numbers in the number at that point. And so one other thing we wanna do, we wanna make sure that we work only with positive numbers. So what we can do with num is if, if num is less than zero, we can make num positive very simply by saying num equals num times negative one, and that'll give us a positive number. So then we have a positive number and we execute our algorithm and it should give us nums and we can pass back nums as a pointer. And let's see if this works. So we have that extract digits 987 and we only want to output if the nums i is greater than zero. greater than negative one actually. We're greater than or equal to zero. So let's do that. And let's put it in a if statement. So let's see if this works. And so this time you notice that I'm working my way from zero to the length. And so I gotta say i less than length. i plus plus nums i. So we have nums declared here, and we have 987 here, and we output nine, and we have all the numbers. So let's see if this works. And we have an error. So what's our error in function int? I was not declared in this scope. So I was not declared. So I did not properly declare nine. And we have another error. Let's see what our error is. Extract warning address of local variable. And what that's simply telling you is that we are passing back something that we declared in here. We would have to do a memory allocation in order for that to work, but we can simply fix that and say like this instead. We can say uh, return void, and we can just pass the array that we want. So we can have int nums, an array of nums, here have the array and we just assume that it's 10 and we won't do this here we'll do this in the other value so we do that we pass nums and we store it in nums and this time since we're storing storing it in nums we don't have to even return nums we can just update nums And since we copied it, we can copy it here. 
and let's try it again and that gives us some other error redeclaration event nums extract digits oh because we already declared it here so let's take and give it a different name we'll call this nums1 we'll call this nums2 nums2 and in reality since we're not returning that we just call nums so we don't even need to call it nums1 we just call it nums and we have nums nums okay so extract digits nums let's run it again and we have length we have length here which we didn't define length so let's just give it the hard-coded value of 10 we have another error and now count was not declared count where did I do count okay let's say count endo and I have a bad habit of misspelling that let's try it again and now you see that we've extracted 987 thank you for bearing with me as you saw there's errors and you will get those when you code so I like to leave them in so you can see how it actually works and how to find your mistakes so now you can see that I did 987 what if we did another number but let's put this in a function so it'll make it easier Let's cut this out and we can just say display and we can display nums and we have to pass it nums and we're assuming a an array of 10 so we display nums we have i declared okay we have i declared here we have nums declared so that should work so we display nums instead of doing all that so we say extract digits and we extract the digits and we have nums so let's go ahead and display nums and we have nums here and we don't need to pass it anything else so let's see if that works and see out endo expected on line 40. So line 40, we have see out endo because I left out my semicolon. Let's go ahead and run it. And you can see it extracts that. What if we wanted to do more? So <clears throat> what we wanna do, uh, nums, we can initialize it in a loop. Very simply, we can initialize all of that because you can only do this at the beginning when you initialize a, a value, but what if you wanted to initialize it? Well, you can put it in a loop and initialize it that way. So let's do that in our nums. Instead of doing this, let's go ahead and initialize nums to negative one for i. Let's take a different value. Let's say j equals zero, or let's do negative one j greater than negative what do we have 10 so we go from negative 1 through negative 10 that's only going to give us nine values so we know get greater than negative 11 and j minus minus and we can initialize nums that way let's initialize nums and but in this case since we have this let's let's instead do it a simpler way let's go from j equals zero to j equal less than 10 and j plus plus and what we can do here we can say nums j which is going to be from zero equals j times right and we can say so let's think about this we want it to be a negative number always. We're starting with J, right? So let's go ahead and add one to J so we can start from one and we can multiply it times negative one. And that'll give us a negative number. So we have J plus one, which will be one times negative one is negative one. And then J, and then when it's two, when it's one plus one, it'll be two times negative one, which will give us a negative number. And that way we initialize our array to all negative numbers. So now we have nums initialized and we have this here. So we extract the digit of nums 
and nums, we don't even have to worry about this anymore. We just simply initialize it every time. So we don't have to worry about this. We can just initialize it to zero because our extract digits will handle the initialization. So let's go ahead and run it. And you can see the leading zeros. But now one thing we didn't do in our display and because we initialized it all to zeros, so something didn't initialize properly here when we did extract digits. Because in reality, when we're extracting digits, it's not what we need to initialize. We need to initialize in <coughs> display nums. Well, we can't do it in display nums. We have to do it here. Let's, so let's see if something is wrong. So we extract digits here. Before we extract, we initialize everything to negative one. J, J plus one times negative one. So, hmm, interesting problem. So our issue here is the reason we have a bug is because we start j equals zero while j greater than 10. Well, that's not going to happen. We have to say j less than 10. So let's go ahead and run it again and see if it works. And now we have that. So now we've ex uh, split the functionality into two functions and we could continue doing that. And we could just simply do more numbers. Let's try it with a different number. And let's take a number, just let's just take a random number, one, zero, two, three, four, five, six. And let's see if it splits that number. As long as it's less than 10, it should work. But one thing we wanna do is we want to have an endo and display num. So we just wanna do C out endo. Let's go ahead and run it. And my bad habit of doing that. So there you see, we took one, zero, two, three, four, five, six, and we have split it. Thanks for watching, long video, but hopefully you got something out of it. So it's worth your time. And that is the way you split a number into its individual characters. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. If you don't, or if you have a question, leave a comment below. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe because I have more great videos coming your way. And remember, in the description, I will post the code so you can play around with it yourself. Thanks for watching.